Hey folks, welcome to Deconstructing the Game. My name is Mike, and in today's Cyberpunk 2077 video, I want to talk about how you can make the game harder for yourself if you're one of those people that thinks it's too easy, even on very hard. This is something I would do if I found the game too easy, and it also goes into a bit of roleplay, and it tries to make the game a bit more realistic for anyone who wants to go down that route of playing the game. This is just a subjective opinion piece of mine, but hopefully you guys will find it fun, and you can try it out yourself. Let's get to it. Okay, so as I said in the introduction, this is my personal way of playing the game if things get too easy for me and I want to add a bit more realism into the mix. So how do we do that exactly? Well, if we properly utilise the vehicle storage system and manage our inventory properly, we can make the game more realistic and interesting to play. In this example, I'm rocking up to a 6th street gang activity in a vehicle of my choice. I go to the trunk, I get all the equipment that I need and I dress V appropriately for the mission at hand. The vehicle inventory is tied to our main inventory at the apartment suite, so things can get a little bit messy. If you want to make things easier for yourself in the way of how you dress your character, you can in fact put all the clothes items on your character, but only dress your character in an appropriate spot, like the trunk of your vehicle or in your apartment building. Weapons you can put in the trunk of your vehicle if you so wish, because they're not that hard to find provided you don't have a lot in there to begin with. So in this example, our V is dressed like a crime fighting Annie Lennox, with police body armour and some kick-ass boots. But there's not enough room to put any magazines for our assault rifle or our pistol. So what do we do about that? Well, go into our inventory and pick an item that actually has pockets to fit enough equipment in. Now this is where the realism and the roleplay come into effect. You see, this body armour has pockets, so I'll choose a select amount of pockets for my rifle ammunition and my pistol magazines. In this loadout, I've got a pistol, a rifle, and a blade. So we can realistically assume that a pistol will be on the side holster, the rifle that we've picked up from the trunk will be attached to a sling, and the knife could be in the small of our back somewhere or in a side pocket. You could have two pistols if you wanted to, but in my opinion, I think one pistol is realistic if you're going for like the police officer aspect, or just a merc in general. You can do any character you want, but in this playthrough, I'm going as like a realistic crime fighting police officer merc kind of thing which only really takes into account what you would normally have in the field. For me, playing realistically means that you give yourself a set amount of ammunition, for example, three magazines of about 90 rounds, and possibly about four to five magazines with 12 rounds in each for a pistol. If you want to have another pistol, you can, but you can't increase your magazine amount because there's not enough space in your pockets. That's just my personal playthrough, but you can do any way you like. You can do samurai if you want, or knife, or just melee, or you can just sneak around if you want to as well, but the realism aspect for me is basically going in, using tactful cover, using the equipment that you would normally use in real life, and stun grenades and things like that. But you play any way you like, and that's the beauty of this game. There's different playstyles you can utilise, and it all depends on how you want to play the game. If you run out of ammunition, steal a weapon and use that. Do John Wick, just grab weapons and use them until they're bone dry. Try and pick up as many weapons as you can, and at the end of it, Realistically, you're not going to pick up all the weapons, and if you want to switch weapon, or if you want to kind of upgrade your weapon, that's all well and good. Take it to the trunk of your car, put the stuff in your stash, and then try and figure out what kind of loadout you want to do for the next mission. Whenever I finish with a gig or a side mission or an assault in progress, and I go with this tactic, I always like to put my rifle back in the trunk and anything I've picked up. That way, if I'm driving around Night City, I've only got a pistol and a blade to defend myself with. You can always take your body armour off as well and use plain civilian clothing, and if you're going to go and attack someone, you basically have to go and properly equip yourself. I think this adds an extra layer of realism, and basically this is how I like to play the game when I'm bored, or just like to add an extra challenge into the mix. It also adds a bit of immersion. For me, if I'm using this in an open world aspect, where I'm just coming across gangs fighting, or I'm just walking around looking for stuff, then for me it's a bit more immersive, it's more realistic, and it makes me think about the consequences going forward if I don't properly equip the things and equip my character for things that they might need in a fight. Also, I think it's worth noting that when I play in this style, I don't use any inhalers to heal myself. I can eat food and drink stuff before a fight to buff myself up, but in my opinion, inhalers aren't exactly the best and it's pretty immersion breaking in my opinion. Whilst making the video, I did think it would be pretty cool if each individual vehicle had its own stash. That way, you could cherry pick your favourite items and pick specific vehicles for specific jobs instead of having a massive stash linked to your apartment. That's just my opinion, but I think it'd be pretty cool. 
it might make it difficult to find things if you forget what vehicle it is, but initially I think if you're doing this thing and you want to make it more immersive, it could be a cool mod to add to PC if you so wish. And another thing I thought would be pretty cool is if vehicles actually acted as decent cover instead of blowing up after taking a couple of hits. Like for example, rocking up, opening a door and then taking cover behind the door could be a neat way of making it more immersive because vehicles, let's face it, they don't explode after taking rounds, they just don't do that. And one more way I like to make the game harder for myself and more realistic is I don't call my vehicle. I basically have my vehicles parked in different destinations of town, so if I find myself fighting gangs and I run out of ammunition and I can't find a weapon to steal, I have to run to a vehicle that I know is there and get my ammo and guns. It just makes it a bit more fun and a little bit more challenging. Because your vehicles are on the map and you can basically have them anywhere you like and they don't despawn. You can also go full realism by turning off all the HUD elements, that way you can't see where the minimap markers are for the enemies, and you can't see your own health. You can also turn off the hit points and the damage markers for enemies as well, making it a clear screen and basically full realistic. This is my personal way of playing Cyberpunk 2077 if I don't want to play it normally and if I find it too easy, or if I want an extra added challenge. I can appreciate this isn't for everyone, but I thought I might throw it out there just in case somebody wants to take a little bit of what I've said, maybe a little aspect of it, just to try and make the game a bit more interesting and a bit more challenging. If you like the video you've seen here today, you can check out more videos like this on YouTube, and we also have a Discord channel for you to get involved in the discussion of Cyberpunk 2077 and share your thoughts and feelings on the game as a whole. I've also started up a Patreon page for the DTG channel, so if you want to go check out the tiers, you're more than welcome to do so. My name's Mike, you've been watching Deconstructing the Game, and as always, I'll catch you later.